What's going on everyone? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today we're gonna to be looking at the On Cloud Swift running shoes. So three things to like about this model is number one, if you plan to walk long distances, do shorter runs and mid-range runs, I think this is a pretty phenomenal model for tackling those asks, especially if you plan to use these more in an indoor setting. I'll talk about why later on in the review as opposed to using them in an outdoor setting. So across the board, if you're somebody like myself who is getting more into running and starting to push the envelope with your weekly mileage, I think this is a pretty good pair to kind of acclimate you to that style of training and to get more back into the running game or to provide you with a nice comfortable ride for longer walks or more of your slow paced recovery runs. The second thing to like about this model is I do enjoy the booty construction. So I actually wasn't sold on the boot of this model because we do have a booty construction. We don't have a separate tongue in this model. And I get a little bit nervous with running shoes and this style of construction because with booty style designs, they can stretch out over time and kind of break down and they could feel loose throughout the midfoot. But overall, the shoe has done a pretty phenomenal job at giving you a nice lockdown feeling. And I think that's due to the external layers here on the medial and lateral side. They give you a nice like lockdown feeling throughout the midfoot. So overall, I don't think most folks are gonna have an issue with heel slippage in this model, etc. The third thing to like about this model is just how lightweight and maneuverable it is. Across the board, you get a lot of action out of the shoe, which is a great thing, especially for folks who do wanna use this shoe for not only just their runs, maybe tempo runs, but also maybe some casual plyometrics, agility, or even athletic focus work, like let's say at the track. So if you do want a shoe that can kind of tackle all those asks, I do think this is a pretty phenomenal model for tackling those asks. Plus, it is fairly breathable throughout the upper and with how lightweight it is, it's kind of a joy to wear for longer periods and it never really feels overbearing. But now let's talk about a couple of cons because I have noticed a few things with the Cloud Swift. So three cons to look out for in the on Cloud Swift running shoe is number one, it's long-term durability. So I mentioned earlier in the pros that I actually prefer this shoe for indoor sessions over outdoor, and that's because with this Cloud Tech midsole up here, I'm noticing a tiny bit of fraying already in this model, and they're fairly new, and I'm having a little bit of breakdown right here in the upper on the lateral side outside of the toe box in this right-sided model. So across the board, I'm nervous that if you use these for longer sessions outside on hotter asphalt or rocky surfaces, you may experience faster rates of breakdown throughout this Cloud Tech midsole. In my On Cloud X, I've used those for multiple outdoor sessions, especially with more athletic focused work, and I'm noticing a similar issue there. So I'm wondering if it's the overall outsole and Cloud Tech midsole construction used in these models. The second con is more of an aesthetic thing. It's not really a performance hindering con, but if you have a more neutral or narrow foot and you tighten up the shoe a lot, you will get a little bit of folding of material down here in the toe box. Now, personally, that kind of bothers me because also like, why does it have to be like that? I have plenty of models where we don't have any of this issue. This reminds me a lot of the Reebok Nano 9 because similarly, we did have a little bit of overlap of material there. Again, it doesn't really hinder performance, but it just doesn't look that good. And overall, like you will notice that upper pushing into the foot a little bit, especially if you have a foot that is a bit thicker in nature. My third con with this model is that I noted that this shoe can be pretty good for more athletic focused training here and there. If you plan to like go to a track and do more agility work, et cetera, what you can't do and what I would recommend not doing is doing lateral work in this shoe. So on shoes, I feel like are notorious for not having a great amount of lateral support because the midsole compresses so easily. I don't like these at all for lateral work and I'm nervous that if a lot of people are gonna be using them for lateral work, you may find that your performance is hindered due to the overall construction of the shoe. When it comes to optimizing your lateral performance, I don't think these shoes are a good pick. In the On Cloud X, you can kind of get away with more lateral training here and there, especially if you're much more casual in nature. But with this shoe and its thicker Cloud Tech midsole, I would say try to avoid lateral work as a whole if you can. But overall, those are my cons with this model. I do enjoy them for indoor sessions, tempo runs, and shorter runs. However, there are certainly areas where this shoe falls short. But now, let's dive into performance. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. My name is Jake, I am a strength coach based in Denver, and currently, I am tackling a 500 pound squat, 500 pound deadlift, and sub five minute mile in 24 hour feet, and I plan to document that process along with pumping out a ton of shoe, apparel, and fitness content. So if you like all those verticals, and if you feel like supporting, drop subscribe, it's seriously appreciated, but now, Back to the video. So when it comes to performance in the on Cloud Swift running shoe, I'm gonna talk about how this shoe performs in more of like versatile style training, and then we'll talk about running and longer walks. Generally, I'll talk about lifting in most of my cross training shoe reviews, but this is not a cross training shoe. And honestly, sometimes when you Google this model, it'll pop up as like a training shoe in Google. 
I'm actually not a fan of calling this a training shoe because with its midsole construction, you can't really load it a ton. Like this midsole compresses under my own body weight, especially when I bias my weight. So loading in this model is probably not the best idea in my opinion. If you plan on going pretty light with your training, then I guess you can get away with some very light training in the shoe. But across the board, I'm not the biggest fan of loading in this model just due to the sheer amount of how much the midsole compresses. I would say limit this shoe's use to running longer walks and more versatile training. So when talking about versatile training, what does that actually mean? So in this setting, I'm talking about some casual hit workouts, some sprints, tempo runs, you could be doing agility work, or you can be doing like track style workouts where you're doing some bounding and jumping activities. And for those activities, I do actually like this model with how lightweight it is and its overall booty construction being very breathable. It does feel pretty good on the foot, especially for longer sessions. And if you're at the track, for example, wearing them like on turf or wearing them on the track itself, this model does a really good job at providing you with a nice lightweight athletic feel. Plus you get a lot of responsiveness out of the midsole in this model. Again, it may not be the best bet, especially for more lateral movements, but when it comes to working in a more sagittal plane, so working more forward and backwards, this model does a pretty good job, especially from a more versatile training standpoint. Now, when talking about running, how does this model do? So we have a seven millimeter heel to toe drop in this model. So if you are somebody with a more midfoot strike or even forefoot strike, I think you'll like how this shoe feels. If you're a heel striker, you may not like the overall fit and feel of the shoe, especially when it comes to your overall gait and how you like to strike. But for my more midfoot strikers like myself, this model does a pretty good job of across the board and I do like its overall construction when giving you a nice level of responsiveness from the ground. You get a lot of feedback out of this model, but what I would say is that if you are somebody with a longer stride, be very conscious of trying to speed up your cadence and get your foot under you faster. I noticed that with a slower cadence, the Cloud Tech midsole is like really kind of awkward because it jams up and then it kind of like springs you forward. It doesn't really have like a nice level of responsiveness that kind of propels you. It kind of almost like stops you because this Cloud Tech like compresses backwards and it almost kind of limits some of your momentum forward. So just keep that in mind if you do have a slower cadence. Now, when it comes to distance of running in the shoe, I have run up to six miles in this shoe and it has done a pretty good job across the board. This shoe is suggested to be used for indoor and outdoor training with short runs and mid-range runs. And overall, I think that that's a pretty great description for what this model is gonna be best for. For longer sessions, I'm not exactly sold that I wanna wear this shoe, one, because of the durability, but two, just because of the overall comfort. And as I start to fatigue and if my cadence does start to slow down, I actually want a shoe that's gonna feed a little bit better into giving me a bit more feedback from the ground with that style of gait as I adapt to being a bit more fatigued in longer sessions. Now on a day-to-day -day basis and for a daily wear basis, if you want this shoe for longer walks, I think you'll really like this model. I'm not so much worried about the durability from an outdoor standpoint if you're just walking in the shoe because you're not gonna have as much friction from driving into that ground and propelling yourself forward. So if you want a comfortable shoe for longer walks, I think this model is a good bet and it should actually last you a longer time because you're not gonna be putting as much friction into the midsole as you would with running. So now let's answer the question, is this model worth it? At a price point of $150 USD, I would actually say steer clear of this model if you plan to use them primarily for mid-range or longer sessions outside. If you want a shoe for longer walks or training more indoors or at the track or on turf, I think this model is worth it. I love the overall booty construction and how breathable it is. And overall, I think it's midsole and outsole construction feed really well into those specific settings. My only concern is that if you're gonna be investing $150 USD, I wanna make sure this shoe lasts for you. So be very conscious in which how you plan to use this model for your training sessions. So when talking on heel to toe drop and weight in this model, this model once again has a seven millimeter heel to toe drop. And for a size 10 model, you can expect a weight of 10.55 ounces. Now when chatting on sizing and fit in the on Cloud Swift running shoe, you should be safe going true to size in this model. Overall, it's gonna feel a bit snug when you first get them. However, the overall boot construction, I think breaks in really well. So if you do like to wear thicker socks, for example, when you run, and if you do feel a bit tighter in this model, I think it will break in and give you a little bit more room as you wear this model a little bit more. When it comes to length, this model fits true, but I will say, like with most on models, it does have a slightly slimmer foot through the midfoot. So if you do have a flatter or wider foot, you may find this shoe to be a little bit uncomfortable, especially in those first few sessions, but again, I think it should break in, and I don't think you're gonna have to go up a half size in order to make this shoe fit. Because we have a booty construction, I would also say be conscious of sizing up because I don't want you to have heel slip from the booty construction not being
being able to really lock down that midfoot for you. So when chatting on price in this model, you can expect to pay $150 USD. Now I will say, and I wanna reiterate this one more time, if you plan to invest in this model, just be very conscious in which how you wanna use it. I do not want you to invest your money in this shoe, wear it for two months outside and have it break down and then have you come back to this video, find my address, come to my apartment and then kick my ass because your shoe broke down fast because you watched this review, you decided to invest, etc. So I, I don't want any of that. So just please be very conscious in which how you plan to use this shoe because I want your investment to go the distance. So if you're doing longer walks, training indoors or training at the track or on turf, your money should go the distance. All right guys, now let's talk about the construction and the on Cloud Swift running shoe. Up here in the toe, we have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. Personally, I'm not always the biggest fan of these skinnier lips because once again, you are gonna potentially get a little bit of fraying here throughout the midsole especially if you are a bit toe heavy with any of your training and what I would say is be very conscious of having a toe dragging movement in this model so if you're doing like prones to sprints or if you're doing burpees just be conscious of the overall lipping in this outsole layer that wraps up because thinner lips here have the potential to break down a little bit faster than more wide outsole layers that wrap up we have a breathable mesh throughout the forefoot and toe box as you can see we have some ventilation here throughout the boot we also have a thicker mesh material back here the boot locks down the foot pretty dang well and despite being a booty design once again without a separate tongue the shoe overall stays pretty snug on the foot and there's never really any issues with heel slip in this model that I have noticed we have some external layers here on the lateral and medial side and these also help really provide that nice lockdown feeling in this shoe. So as you can see, they kind of come up and over and help provide additional midfoot support with this model. We have six eyelets that run up and, and across the board, I haven't noticed any issues with these eyelets having any issue with not locking down that midfoot once again. We are gonna have a little bit of material overlap here if you do have a slightly more narrow or neutral foot and you like to have your shoes a bit more tight. So just be conscious of that as a whole and then making our way to the midsole. So we have that cloud tech throughout here. This is a bit thicker than something like the on cloud x we have an extreme rocker outsole along with a re-engineered speedboard so basically that's what gives this shoe this like rocking nature here it's basically designed and optimized to help give you a bit more of like a propelling nature when wearing this model we do have a removable insole here so as you can see the insole is slightly thinner so what i would say is if you have custom orthotics and they're pretty thick be conscious of investing in this model with booty style shoes you have a bit less room generally especially through the midfoot when it comes to giving you a bit more space and wiggle room if you have thicker custom orthotics so this may not be the best model for you but definitely keep that in mind so you can try them on and return them if they don't fit for you overall i think that's the gist of the construction in this model i do like the construction as a whole but there are certain areas that i definitely think need a little bit of a reworking to them if you have any questions on the construction in this model make sure you hit me in the comments below all right guys that wraps up my review of the on cloud swift running shoe across the board i do think this is a decent model for a very specific training settings, but there are some long-term durability concerns I have with this model. If you have any questions on this shoe, hit me in the comments below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.